Hallelujah. Oh. When he says peace there, he's talking about an assured rest. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is guaranteed. Yes, sir. It's waiting for you. Yes, sir. And then he says life and peace. Yes, sir. Life. So here he begins to tell us why it is very imperative for you and I to be spiritually minded. He says because that's the only way you have access to life and peace of mind. Assured peace. Assured peace. Yes, sir. Wow. Here he's saying there is a peace God cannot give you. Someone said, Jesus said, my peace, I, I live with you, not as the world, live it. He was talking to his disciples, not to you. That was 2,000 years ago. He was not talking to you. He was talking to his disciples, and those guys are already gone. Someone said, what he said to them now, he's saying to us now. But look at your life now. What Jesus said then, he's saying to you now. Paul says, don't be stupid. He says, if you are spiritually minded, he said, that mind, that mind itself, that, that state of being spiritually minded, he said, is peace. Wow. So, this time around, he's not saying, God is going to give you peace. Your mind will become peace. He said, to be spiritually minded is life. Is. Not is going to be. Oh, yes, is life yes, yes. and peace. Yes, People will see you and have assurance. Yes. And here, when he says life here, is the, is the Greek word zoe, which speaks of, you know, preachers preach that when you give your heart to Christ, God gives you his life, which is zoe. But he is talking to people who, who were already Christians. I thought they already had the zoe. No. So Paul here disagrees with those folks who say when you give your heart to Christ, God gives you eternal life, which is Zoe. Because if they already had it, why is he telling them that if you are spiritually minded, you now have Zoe, you are now Zoe, and then peace. Why is he repeating it again? Which means that's not the case. When you gave your heart to Christ, God did not give you eternal life. And that's the honest truth. Come on, man. Go to Romans, go to Romans chapter 10. Let, let's read verses 9 and 10 so that you can understand that when you gave your heart to Christ, eternal life was not given to you. When Jesus in John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, Jesus had not died yet. And he was talking to Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was not, a, was not a Christian. And Jesus was not referring to something futuristic. Because verse 17 says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the son through him might be saved. John chapter 8, when you read from verses 28 to verses 32, the Bible says many believed on Jesus. And they were saved. See something. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It is says thou shalt have eternal life. He says you will be saved. Yes, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. He didn't say you will have eternal life. Yes, Someone say salvation is eternal life. Then Paul is crazy. If I see what he says next, read. For with the heart, man believeth unto justice. Righteousness there speaks of justice. And then next, with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. There's nothing about eternal life mentioned. In fact, let's even find out what eternal life really is. So that you will know 
that when you give your heart to Christ, you did not receive eternal life when you give your heart to Christ. Yes, you were only saved. Saved from what? Saved from the domain of darkness, from the corridors of darkness. It still doesn't mean that the enemy will still not have access to you if you let it. So what is eternal life then? Let's see, because there's only one person who can tell us what eternal life is. And that person is Jesus. Now, if you disagree with what Jesus said, then you can't be helped. Go to John 17. John chapter 17. Because he's telling us, if you recondition your mind, you will even become Zoe. He says here, let's see what Jesus said about eternal life. And if Jesus is wrong, then we're all done for. And if your pastor disagrees with Jesus, it's a big problem. Because just because something has been said for many years in the churches does not make it necessarily true. So let's find out whether eternal life is something you receive when you give your heart to Christ. These are the words of Jesus. Verses 1. This was spake Jesus. This was three days before he was arrested. This was spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give what? Eternal life. He should give eternal life to who? To as many as what? Until God gives you, gives you to him, you can have eternal life. That's what he's trying to say. But now, see verses 3. And this is life eternal. What is life eternal? That they might know thee as the only true God. So, knowing the almighty God is what is called eternal life. When you gave your heart to Christ, did you know God? Please answer. Now. Did you really know God? Or it was after you came to Christ that you started knowing about God. But the preachers out there, they tell us that when you give your heart to Christ, you will receive eternal life. Jesus said that's not true. Because eternal life is in knowledge. It's an acquisition of knowledge. Knowing God as the only true God, because there are a lot of gods calling for your attention. But to come to the point in the midst of so many gods, to know the Father yes. as the only true God, yes. Jesus said, when you get to that state, you now have eternal life. Yes, sir. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. So Jesus already told us what eternal life is. It is not something you receive when you give your heart to Christ. It's a journey. Journey to acquiring knowledge of who the Father really is. Yes. Go to go to First Peter, First Peter, chapter one, verses three. Let, let's read First Peter chapter one, verses three, because Jesus said this is what eternal life is. Someone say, is there a difference between eternal life and everlasting life? Yes, there's a big difference between both. Again, that's another mistake those preachers make. They think that eternal life is the same as everlasting life. They are not the same. There's a big difference. When Jesus said in John 3, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, not eternal life. Some translations wrongly translate that as eternal life. No, but what Jesus actually said was everlasting life. What did he mean by everlasting life? Because they were all under the curse of the law. The Jews were under the curse of the law because they broke the law. And the Bible says... The wages of sin is death. Yes. And the Bible says they were all their lifetime subject to bondage because of the fear of death. So because they were all under the curse of the Lord, they had a shortened lifespan. Yes. So the men didn't live long. And there were so many widows. If you study the Bible, in the days of Jesus, there were a lot of widows. The men died early, leaving many women and children. Now, Jesus now came and said, if you believe in me, you will not perish. 
but rather you have what? An everlasting life. It's a compound word. Everlasting. That means your life will last yes. to yes, the full. Yes, that means the number of their days they will surely fulfill. Yes, if only they will believe in him. So if God had planned for one to live 150 years, Jesus is saying, if you believe you, if you believe in me, you will surely hit that 150. Yes, sir. You will not die at 67. You will live longer. So that's what Jesus was referring to. Because the throes of death was upon them because they were under the curse of the law. And Jesus came and said, if you believe in me, you will last long. Kai. Yes, Remember Moses actually who brought the law, told the Lord, teach us to number our days. And the Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? Yes, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Yes, he that loves it shall eat the fruit thereof. Now, with what do you confess? Is it not with your mouth? Yes, sir. Now, can your mouth function without a tongue? No. And Jesus is saying, if you believe. Yes, sir. And what do you do? You acknowledge your belief. Yes, sir. Then Jesus said, by you acknowledging the belief, you will live long. Yes, sir. That's different from eternal life. Eternal life is a knowledge. It's an acquisition of knowledge, knowing who God is. That's completely different from everlasting life. Do you see the difference now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But they, yes, sir. they model everything off. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now, when Paul says here, to, okay, let's see what Apostle Peter said. Go to 2 Peter chapter 2. You see something that Apostle Peter made it even clearer about what Jesus was even saying, that eternal life is an acquisition of knowledge, yes, of knowing who God really is as the only true God. Because Jesus knew it's a big issue. Many people are still yet to come to terms in acknowledging God as the only true God. And Jesus said, once you hit that point in your life, through the acquisition of the right knowledge, you will know that you have entered the corridors of eternal life. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Blessed, be Blessed be God. See what Apostle Peter said. He said, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Okay, go to verse 2. Verse 2. Notice what Apostle Peter said. He says what? Grace and peace be multiplied. Grace and peace. Peace. An assured rest of mind. Grace and peace. Be multiplied unto you. Yes. Through what? The knowledge, the knowledge of God. What do you call that? Eternal, Eternal life. life. Yes, Through the knowledge of yes. God. Yes, and then the knowledge of Jesus. Yes, but what people do is that they try to promote the knowledge of Jesus above the knowledge of God. You see why they don't have peace? Apostle Peter who even followed Jesus. That Jesus handed the ministry over to. Apostle Peter said... Seek the knowledge of God first before Jesus, before the knowledge of Jesus. But today, in the churches, they say it is all about Jesus. Apostle Peter say you are crazy, man. Look. Knowledge of God first before the knowledge of Jesus. He says that's the only way grace and peace can multiply in your life. So, why is it that there's no peace in your life since you've been going to church all these years? Well, what have you been learning exactly? My pastor preaches on Jesus the most. Now, think about preachers who say, my focus in ministry, my mission, my mandate in ministry is to talk about Jesus. Oh, man. You will embalm destinies. The people that you'll be ministering to will suffer. If your focus is to talk to the people about Jesus only. Apostle Peter said, yeah. what is grace? Grace, grace is for what? It's to be of help. Yes. Now, if your focus is all about Jesus, ignoring the knowledge of God, will you have grace to help? No. That means if you have that kind of pastor who says his focus is all about Jesus, the people are in for a hard time. They will suffer. Yeah, they call Jesus all the time. Apostle Peter said, 
Apostle Peter, that Jesus called, that Jesus handed the ministry over, yes. said, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and then the knowledge of Jesus. Next. God first. Because that's how you acquire what? Eternal life. And he's talking to Christians. Yes, but they've been preaching all these years that it is when you give your heart to Christ that you receive eternal life. No, 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 no. Jesus said eternal life is in knowledge. Yes, sir. Of who angels are? No. Of who the cherubims are? No. Of who God is? As what? The only true God. Yes, sir. Because there are a lot of gods. Yes, sir. And they are all calling for your attention. Jesus said, but to be able to acquire the knowledge of knowing that God is exclusively true, you have attained eternal life. <laughs> now, let's see what John, another apostle of Jesus, said about people like that who have attained that realm of life. Go to 1 John chapter 2. Let's read from verses 12. 1 John chapter 2. Where did we tell you to turn to? 1 John chapter 2, verse Now, see what it says. I write unto you, little children. That means the immature, the babies. Yes, sir. Because your sins are forgiven you. For his name's sake. I write unto you, fathers. Mm -hmm. See. For you have known. Yes. They have entered that yes. realm. Yes, they have known him that is from the beginning. Yes, sir. They have entered that realm of knowledge. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. These ones are swimming in eternal life. Yes, sir. That's why they are called fathers. That means we still have a long way to go. Yes, sir. So say, I'm your spiritual father because I led you to Christ. No. To be a spiritual father is in knowledge. Do you know the hymn that is from the beginning? If you do, then fine. Welcome to the club. So you see, we still have a long way to go, brother. Here, being a spiritual father has nothing to do with gifts. Is knowledge, knowledge exactly. of the giver of the gifts. What do you really know? And does that one know you? Because he's called the him. <laughs> All right, go back to Romans chapter 8. Now, let's read verse 6. He says here, oh, it is very, very important that you are spiritually minded. So, the question is, is it possible to be spiritually minded? The answer is yes. yes.